at the time that that's the bone he broke, the Gideon bone. Okay. So Deshaun Watson's out for the season. Now people are, are here to here here come guys like Colin um, Coward and the rest of the sports media. And I'm not saying all sports media was against the Browns, but I like to think most of them was against the Browns, including Colin um, um, Coward. I can't really recall who else was saying the Browns were through their season was over, but I like to think Colin uh, uh, Colin Coward was lead, leading the way, if that makes sense. Okay, so now the Browns got to figure out the quarterback position. Kevin Stefanski has to figure out the quarterback position, right? Okay, so initially go with P.J. Walker, and P.J. Walker at that time, you know, up until the Seattle game, he played decent, decent, right? They were able to beat the 49ers, and P.J. Walker led a key drive in order for them to get that field goal, right? The game-winning field goal. So, they go to play the, the Seahawks. I'm not sure if they played them right after the 49ers, but they played the Seahawks. And they, okay, in the, in, the, in the game, it was third and I think third and maybe three or something like that or two. Um, now, and, and then Kevin Stefanski gets, gets the blame after after this game, right? And basically, here here come here come the haters calling for his job, saying he needs to get the pink slip because of how they lost the game to the Seahawks, which was a pass play was called and it was thrown to Amari Cooper, which it should have never even been thrown to him because it was three defenders in the area. Okay, nevertheless, it was thrown there and the ball gets tipped up in there and gets intercepted. But Jerome Ford was open in the middle of the field for the first down. Now, I believe if he would have, if PJ Walker would have saw it, or I don't know how this happened, but I don't know how PJ Walker missed him. But if the ball was thrown to Jerome Ford, I believe if he would have caught the ball, they could have ran the clock out and then they, you know, the Browns would have won the game. But. Okay, the ball gets intercepted, and then of course you gotta blame the defense. Still, you gave up a game-winning touchdown, and they was on the—I think they was on the forty. But you still gave up a game-winning touchdown. It was like the defense just gave up, like they didn't put up a fight because they were deflated by the interception. If that makes sense, which that can't happen anyway. You still, even if your quarterback makes a bad play, and the, the um uh, 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 opposition gets the ball. You, the defense still got to come out and play with some motivation. You got, if anything, that should motivate you to want to go out there and stop them from getting the either game-winning uh, 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 touchdown or field or game-time field goal. But, okay, it didn't happen in Browns loss. Okay, we know the story. But Kevin Stefanski got most of the blame because they were, everybody's like, why would you call a pass play when you should have ran the ball and you know the type of quarterback you got back here, P.J. Walker. Why would you even call a pass play for this type of quarterback? Okay. Cooler heads prevail. You know, we people moved on from it. So, Dorian Thompson gets the start. And they end up beating the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? 13-10. Dorian Thompson led a key drive to get, you know, to put the Browns in position to get the game a winning field goal against the Steelers. So, okay. Seemed like. Dorian Thompson Robinson was on his way to, you know, getting the feel of the game and, you know, basically was going to play at least adequate uh, 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 football at the quarterback position for the Browns, right? Okay, they play against the Broncos, and then he gets injured, gets a concussion, of course. The Browns end up losing their last two games. Okay, so now it, it comes down to they, I think, um, I don't. I don't want to say they was in position and not to make the playoffs, but they had to win at least. I want to say their last three games, if that makes sense, in order to make the playoff. Which that's what they ended up doing. They won a lot of key games down the stretch to secure the fifth seed in the AFC playoff picture. So the Browns ended up finish finishing with an eleven and six record, which that's what I predicted for the Browns in the beginning of last season. I predicted the Browns to go 11 and 6. What I didn't see coming was the injuries though. Now, 
even if Deshaun Watson and Nick Chubb would have played, uh, um, if they would have been healthy the rest of you know the whole entire season, I still predicted the Browns go eleven and six, simply because of the Bengals and the Ravens in the division. That's a tough division. Even the Steelers is it, 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 a tough team to beat. The AFC North has always been a tough division. I don't know if they're the toughest uh, of division in the uh, uh, National Football League, but I always know that. Anytime the Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, and Browns play, no matter what the record is, it always, for the most part, goes down to the wire between these teams, these four teams. But I did not predict the Browns to be the last team in the AFC, if that makes sense. Yes, I predicted the Steelers to be the last team in the AFC. And I don't know, actually, the Bengals. But that's because of the injury to Joe Burrow. Come on, we already know why the Bengals end up being the last, you know, the last team in the AFC, the fourth seed or the fourth team in the AFC uh, uh, um, North. We already know why the Bengals ended up being in, being in that place, in that position, because of the Joe Burrow injury, which I'm not going to get into. But it, it just amazes me how now these takes from Colin uh, Coward are like basically, you know, Oh, I would want to play the Cleveland Browns. They got an elite defense. Oh, they have a daughter quarterback now. Oh, the team loves him. Oh, Kevin Stefanski, he's a great, he's a you know he's a great coach, great offensive minded uh, uh, coach too. Um, Andrew Barry is a great GM and so forth. Now this is what you're hearing from him only because the Browns and Kevin Stefanski should get most of the credit. Let's just keep it real right here. Kevin Stefanski should be coach of the year. Okay? He should get coach of the year because of the phenomenal job he's done with the Browns this season. Given the injuries to all these key, given the injuries to two key players in particular. And we know who those two key players are, Deshaun Watson and Nick Chubb. I like, again, I've said this so many times. I like to think if the Bengals and you actually see what happened to the Bengals. They lost Joe Burrow, and that's it. And they ended up being the fourth seed in the AFC North, right? Okay. Uh, I like to think if the Ravens didn't have, let's say the Ravens lost Lamar Jackson and that other guy, Flowers, right? Though I like to think those are two. Those those are two of their uh, uh, relevant uh, offensive offensive um, uh, powerhouses, right? Uh, if I believe they'd have lost Lamar Jackson, that Flowers guy, I don't think the Ravens would have made the playoffs. I think the Browns would have got the number one seed uh, uh, on this season, if it makes sense, going into the playoffs. I think the Browns would have been the one to get the first round by and so forth if the injuries would have had to occur to the Ravens. Now, the Steelers, the only thing I can say about the Steelers is say, let's say what if T.J. Watt was out for the season? Right, and the other guy, I believe his name is Cam Hayward. Let's say them two was out for the season. Would the Steelers have made the playoffs? I don't think so because they didn't have a quarterback. They don't have a quarterback, so I don't think the Steelers would have made the playoffs. Um, Kansas City Chiefs, they lose Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey for the season. No, I don't think they would have made the playoffs. Um, the Niners. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Brock Purdy, I don't think they'd make the playoffs. Uh, Buffalo, Josh Allen goes down. Don't think they'd make the playoffs. So, I mean, all these top teams, these, I mean, these, these these top teams, I, well, well, yeah, these top teams that I, I've, I've mentioned, there's others. That's a, they're, they're, Well, let's just say elite. The elite teams I just mentioned. Right? And if they would have lost their key components, their key offensive powerhouse components, do I think they would have made the playoffs? No. I don't think so. Could be wrong, but I don't think they would have made the playoffs. The job Kevin Stefanski has done for the Cleveland Browns this season, and he's always been, in my opinion, a good coach. Now he's flirting with elite status. Yeah, he, he's got to take the Browns to a Super Bowl and win one to be considered one of the elite head coaches in the game. That's just my opinion. But I think 
I think Kevin Stefanski is flirting with that now. Kevin Stefanski's always been a good NFL coach. But again, I think he's flirting with elite status now. But again, it, it was never his fault why the Browns couldn't like get on track, turn the page, if that makes sense. And, and people should have saw the potential Kevin Stefanski had in COVID year when they went 11 and 5 and made the playoffs and beat the Steelers in the first round. It was actually perhaps a couple plays away from playing in the AFC Championship game against the Buffalo uh, Bills that season. They should have saw the potential there, but no, nobody wanted to see it. The last two seasons were, were, was horrendous, and he got most of the blame because, to be honest, I don't know why he got most of the blame, and I felt it was unwanted, if that makes sense. So, again, fast forward to this season. And look at the phenomenal job he has done. Andrew Barry and Jimmy Haslam get credit for this too because Haslam is signing off on the checks. And he's, you know, even though I don't think Haslam was that involved in the decisions that the, you know, the head coaches or, you know, just, you know, what we ain't gonna talk about the, the the old regime. Let's talk about the new regime. I don't think he was that involved with the decisions that Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry is making a couple years back. Regard Baker Mayfield, um, the defense, Joe Woods, and so forth. Um, I don't think he was that involved with those decisions. But, yeah, you got to give Haslam credit this season. He's kind of been, you know, staying out the way. He hasn't been so vocal. He hasn't been, you know, to any press conferences all like that like he was you know, the last couple seasons. So Haslam gets credit for, for this, for the, for the Browns, you know, having the season that they're having so far. He gets credit, and then Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski, yeah, they get the most of the credit because Andrew Barry is the one who is drafting, making the right, you know, the correct drafting decisions regarding the players. And then, of course, Kevin Stefanski's brilliance is this on this play. And then he's, yeah, you, if you want to talk about Joe Flacco, of course, yeah. They have a quarterback. Joe Flacco, the question is being asked, is he is, is Joe Flacco elite? Yeah, he's actually playing elite this season. He's playing elite this season. He's averaging like, what, 300 some yards? A, 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 a game or something like that. I want to say he got, I know he got, oh, I could be wrong about this. I want to say he has 13 touchdowns and I want to say seven interceptions. I could be wrong. But, okay. Yeah, Flacco's playing elite this season. But, again, it amazes me that guys like Colin Coward, who were always putting out these negative tapes and giving out these negative opinions about the Browns and now all of a sudden it seems like he's you know want to be he wants to be a rider now for the Browns now he 